It's been a difficult couple of years for the folks in the industry. We've had a lot of changes, mobile privacy challenges, funding environment changing and cooling, a lot of layoffs and consolidation, and I'd say relatively stagnant industry growth. I mean, industry still growing, but it's moderated a little bit. On top of that, there's been a lot of adoption of new technology. Web3 is big. A couple of years ago, still going strong in some segments. Now AI is taking over the world. It's kind of fast and confusing. But despite all this tumult, games industry is growing. Small and efficient teams can really get out there and delight their players, build strong, sustainable businesses. We have a couple of really awesome lean teams here today. And so that's what we're here to talk about. Let's just open up the panel, open this up to the panel. What new tools, processes, and innovations have driven the most efficiency in your team? Let's go to Warren first. So I would be remiss to not call out like the hard work our team has been doing on developing the uptick platform. So a lot of our teams know some more for like our agency style work, but like that has been sort of like the thing that we have really been focused on in the background for the last five years. And we did this both selfishly for ourselves to like replace a lot of cost centers that we would have for a business, but also like every team team in games marketing has to solve the same problems and has to expend a lot of capital to solve these. So this is like, okay, you want reporting, you need to like license Tableau or Looker and then get an analyst to build out a 10 dashboards. And you're probably going to build that same 20 dashboards that you built at your last company, but it's going to take, you know, three, four months to get you there. And then you need data scientists to build like models, forecast revenue. You need to license a dam for like creative workflows. You need social management tools. So we built here just our own centralized hub that does like all these things in one place. So when we quickly ramp up on a project, like the stuff is plug and play. And then now we've also started like licensing this to other teams. So like selfless plug, like if you guys are a lean team and you're trying to like do a lot with a small team, like we we built this for this specific reason for our own team. I and mean, we're happy to like show it off. You can give it a try, see if it's something that's useful for you. But yeah, that would be like, I'd say the main thing we've been focusing on here is like, how can you remove multiple cost centers, get all these pieces around to talk to each other in one centralized platform? We are extremely biased in this, but yeah, that's that's the tech that I'm personally most excited about right now. Me too. If you want to learn more <laughs> about it, go to uptick.com. All right, enough showing. Next, let's go to Hank. How have you guys been using new tools and processes at your company? Yeah, this will be a repeated theme here, but generative AI has truly significantly improved our ability to generate content for our games as well as creative assets. And this will only get better and better and, and we'll become better at it over time. The tools will get more efficient. We'll get more efficient at using them and hopefully keep on going. So it's not, Again, not on the outline, but I'm going to push you on this. Like, can you sure. give a specific example of process that's been increased in efficacy with AI? Yeah. So uh, our portfolio consists of a fair amount of word games, and a lot of those games are sorted into categories. And once you have 250 to 300 categories in a word game, it, it becomes a little taxing to think up what else you could add to it. And yeah, tools, chat GPT helps a lot with that, just providing a, a sounding board of ideas that you can then call and choose what works in your game and areas that you may have missed. And then as well, we use some AI voice translators to kind of do text to voice for creative reads. And rather, and instead of hiring like a voiceover person, we're utilizing tools to make it sound a little better than the old school or text to voice readers of the past. Joey, Candy Raider has really impressed me with my limited proximity to it in terms of how you guys have embraced AI across the huge breadth of the business. Can you talk a little bit about AI and other tools that you're using to increase your efficiency at Candy Raider? Of course, uh, I think you can cue the broken record right here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. AI has played a key role in our creative production uh, within the past year. We're using AI tools to automate so many things, to make dynamic captions, to create imagery and music, to help pace our creatives and content within the game, and to add new processes like character animation into our arsenal. So all around, I, I would say that the tech is just getting better, and then our utilization of that is just getting smarter. So, so let's get really specific, and I'll go right back to you, Joey. What are some of the best tools, platforms that you're using cross growth from creative through UA through analytics? Like, let's talk about exactly the tools that you're using so the audience can steal them. We can absolutely, increase competition yeah. for ourselves. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. For the creative side of this, I think some of the big off the shelf tools we're using are, of course, Adobe Firefly. I think everyone is on that now. It's a very powerful imagery tool. We have a Video Leap, which has a strong sort of thematic video alteration aspect to it, where you can upload ready assets and then completely alter the thematic look of that. We have Suno AI for audio and music. And then most recently, we have Stable Diffusion and Comfy UI to help train AI models that are catered specifically towards BitLife and our other apps. Yeah, that's really interesting. So Warren, what do you, any other thoughts here? I think joining this question and sort of our prior themes together 
I want to kind of drill on on Suno AI as a specific example, which Joey called out. So, like for those who haven't used it, like it's like you know AI music software. You can you give prompts to compose a song, like a fully fleshed out song, like that's production quality, lyrics, fully instrumented, everything. And this is both like a powerful, easy way the teams can leverage AI, but also a reflection of the lean growth team, which might not be super intuitive, but like. Think about a classic giant uh, marketing team for a, a game publisher. Whose job is it to go fiddle around with an AI algorithm and produce a catchy jingle for a game? Like it's not specifically anyone's job in a team like that, but a team that's thinking critically can be like, oh, here's this cool new toy. How can we use it to increase conversion? You know, and we, we use this a lot. And like sometimes when we, for a lot of the bigger teams we support, they're like, wait, yeah, this is, this is cool. But like, is this okay? Like, can we do this? Like, like, how did you guys do this? And it's not like we're doing anything special. We're just leveraging tools out there. It's just like, it's not anyone's job specifically to do that. But by being proactive, having a growth mindset, messing around with tools as they come out, you can find cool ways to increase conversion. So yeah, I digress. But you can use this analogy for a lot of the emerging tools within AI because they're not going to slot perfectly to like doing one for one the job you do today, but maybe for seizing a new opportunity in marketing. Right. It makes a ton of sense. And we kind of preempted this question to you, Hank, because you talked a little bit about it in the question before, but is there any other tools that you specifically want to call out? No, I'll just uh, reiterate what Joey listed. We, we use pretty much everything he listed. I, I will say Suno is, is probably the most fun new AI tool to use. It's just super interesting, as Warren said. And then ChatGPT is really our powerhouse for copy generation, for content generation. Almost anything we need, occasionally helping with coding issues, although that's being picked up by Copilot quite a bit lately. Little of that is specific to growth, but... Yeah, I mean, we should have got a sponsorship from Suno before we did this uh, this webinar. (laughs) I'll also just say, like, very low-hanging tip, like, in the the LLM era, like, there is no reason you need a mediocre or non-localized app store description. Like, that should be, like, the absolute base use case is, like... Just playing with app store descriptions, especially in you know, some teams are done. like, oh, we don't have a copywriting expert. It's fine. If you're just dipping your toe in with AI, it's a good starting point too. Cool. So let's be programmed question. We have a bunch of questions from the audience. We want to crank through this one and then we'll get to the Q&A section. So last question here is thinking about how you alter your workflow to fit the tools. So that's basically the question. How are you effectively changing the way you work in conjunction with these new tools to get a really outsized outcome? And we'll go to you first, Hank. Having been around since 2014, publishing our own games, the new tools have been uh, really interesting. And the biggest change for our processes has been, is there an AI adjacent tool that exists now that we should be using to do something we've been doing our way for the last 10 years. And it it can be tough to recognize that we have a process in place that we've been following dozens or hundreds of times every year could just be automated away. Once we identify that that's a possibility that we should be doing that, it's usually pretty easy to make that happen. But the, the big step for us is recognizing that that opportunity is there. Yeah, it goes a little bit to what Joey said earlier. I forget how you said, like the disruptive growth mindset where it's like, yeah. can I destroy myself to be more efficient? I yep. love it. Joey, how about you? Our workflows have been changing drastically. In some cases, we're seeing an output increase of about 40 to 50%. The AI tools that we previously mentioned have enabled our team to produce meaningful A-B tests with the click of a button. Testing different audio and imagery within the creatives has never been quicker. As we internalize the possibilities of AI, Our mindset also shifts to account for them, touching back on that transformational growth mindset. I think that that it's that progressive mindset that is what keeps our campaigns fresh and the viewers engaged. Yeah, makes a ton of sense. All right, Warren, take it away. I think the big thing that's changing with workflows is boil it all down to one theme that encompasses like a few different workflows. It is really the era of model whispering or, or algo whispering. And that means kind of two things practically. You need people that like get enough familiarity with these different LLMs or different algorithms of of the ad networks and understand what inputs to feed it in order to get the outcomes that that you desire. Like it's less about like building a spreadsheet and doing manual like publisher optimizations for an example for UA, like that's not really a relevant thing or like good use of time anymore or like building like, hey, I'm going to put together a list of like my 20 competitor games and like make this a, a Facebook targeting set. Like that stuff is very low value and doesn't really move the needle anymore. It's just understanding these algorithms and, and how to coach them to get what you want. And then the other side of that is creative. It's cliche, but creative matters now more than ever. Like I think if you are looking to get a meaningfully different growth outcome from your user acquisition or other marketing campaigns, and you are not stepping on the gas to really resource for creative for it, like you're you're not going to get a better outcome. Like the, the creative is ultimately 
you know, the input for a lot of these models, a lot of these algorithms. And so like, I think a lot of teams, you know, really silo out like UA or marketing performance from creative. And now more than ever, like it's, it's the thing that fuels these models, these algorithms within the marketing machines. So don't sell it short for time's sake. I'll just leave it at that. I know we have some questions to get to. We're going to go to wrap up. First of all, thank you everyone for joining us. Really appreciate everyone who is in attendance. <laughs> We're going to give everybody a chance to sign off. Uh, Hank, do you want to talk about anything that you have fun that's coming up? And if someone wants to get a hold of you and you want to let the audience know how to get a hold of you, can you do that? You could always reach out to me directly. I'm, I'm Hank at randomlogicgames.com. Feel free to shoot me an email and I'll reply. But uh, we're, we've got a new game coming out in mid-October that we're pretty pumped about. Not that I expect anybody in the attendance here to play, but uh, it's exciting for us internally. Where can you get it? Only on the Samsung Galaxy Store, it turns out. Oh, geez, okay. <laughs> Gramogram coming up. Yep. Joey, you guys got a lot going on that's fun. Yeah, um, BitLife always has new and exciting features on its horizon. We have a new major update dropping in about a month or so. So stay tuned for that. We've also partnered with Good Game Studio to produce BitLife Go, a new app that contains over a dozen languages that is completely AI powered. So hopefully that comes out this year or first quarter next. So we'll see. Yeah, that's an exciting one. Really, really putting the, the concepts we talked about into maximum practice with that one. All right, Warren, going to you last. We're launching a lot of games here. So always staying busy here at Uptick. I mean, the thing that we are probably making the most noise about right now is again, our, our platform. So it's like, we really encourage, especially like lean teams, like try it out. Like we're, we're pretty transparent people here at Uptick, like with our, with our tools, like we don't like ask people to sign an annual contract or anything like that. Just, just use them. If you like using them, keep using them. If not, don't use them. But we think that people will find a lot of value in them and replace multiple cost centers keep their teams nice and lean and efficient and learn from sort of our battles and our journeys and what's worked for us along the way. And yeah, that's that's what I'm really excited about here. And then also just want to thank one more time, Joey and Hank, like you guys as as lean teams, we know you guys are super busy. So thanks so much for sharing uh, some knowledge with the audience today. Appreciate it. Yeah. Had a good time. Thanks, y'all. Thanks, everyone. Awesome. Talk soon.